players, fans, and staff of the Golden State Warriors, I'm sure have had a sweet off-season celebrating yet another championship. We pay respect to the champs every summer on this channel, and doing that with my Raptors back in 2019 was the feeling of a lifetime, so I understand the vibe that an NBA title brings to a city. But then it goes from glorious to all business in a split second as the off-season hits. For Bob Myers, that's entailed the costly decision regarding who to extend next offseason between the Defensive Player of the Year favorite before he got hurt, Draymond Green, or the should-have-been Most Improved Player of the Year, Jordan Poole, which I covered separately in this video right here. However, the timeline of the Warriors' front office somehow finding a way to keep both Green and Poole in the Bay long-term is a terrifying one. Draymond's versatility in pick and rolls, whether guarding in drop or switching onto smaller players, something that hasn't gotten talked about nearly enough in my videos respecting the Warriors' chip. Steph and Dre are as tight as they get, but there's always been a rivalry between Green and Curry. However, the gossip surrounding it is pure rubbish, because in reality, Curry and Green trying to outdo each other with value on opposite ends of the court is the best possible scenario in terms of the team having success. Stay tuned for a breakdown of Draymond's two-way impact, the factor making the 2023 Warriors most intimidating, and the Dubs rookie who could shock the world. Draymond Green's the greatest defender of his era, and you see exactly why that's the case in the very biggest moments. Throughout the entirety of his career, Drace proved to be an extremely clutch defensive player. Putting the pressure on the refs to blow the whistle in the dying seconds, Green's intensity dramatically increases with the game on the line. In these scenarios, Green consistently exposes out-of-timeout playsets drawn up by opposing coaches, Draymond's mix of increased physicality and keen anticipation makes it a nightmare for even the most elite of players to get a shot off. LeBron learned that lesson the hard way back in 2015's finals, where the paint seemed to be wide open after James gets downhill past Iguodala, but watch how Green reads the drive leaves his matchup Tristan Thompson completely alone and rotates over for a mind-boggling chase down SWAT. Throughout Green's overhated on, frankly historically great NBA career, the list of game-altering defensive sequences with the man either getting a steal or a block in the clutch goes on and on. The fate of the Warriors dynasty has been altered due to Draymond not merely redirecting traffic on the back end and making pristine rotations as an elite rim protector, but what's underappreciated about his defense is how it occurs when Golden State needs that ability utilized the very most. Not every great defender can bring the same lateral movement and footwork when the pressure doubles under the circumstances of an opponent needing a basket to tie or take the lead. The difference between Green and your standard elite rim protector and defensive captain is that he quite literally plays the game of basketball and lives for that type of pressure. This sequence against Memphis back in the regular season acted as a foreshadowing for 2022's second round of the playoffs as Stephen Curry does a great job of sticking with Ja Morant on his drive, and as Ja kicks it out to Jackson Jr., watch how Draymond first rotates to give Curry help at the basket, which he actually didn't need, sticks his hands out for the deflection, and then baits Triple J into shooting it by rotating back to the perimeter swiftly, yet elusively, to block the jumper. Speaking of blocking Jaron Jackson Jr. jump shots, a few months after that, here's what happened in round two of the postseason. Jones for Jackson. Jackson, it's blocked by Green! Draymond Green with a defensive dagger! A round earlier, Green showed off his chops defending the post as watch the strength, anticipation, footwork, and hands to knock it away from the Joker. For the advanced stat junkies, Draymond's good pal Colin Cowherd broke down Green's impact in that respect. Draymond Green is the Warriors, and he allows them to be a lot of things. He's the bouncer at the nightclub, the tough guy on the hockey team to make sure you don't screw with Steph. But there's some stats about Draymond Green that are fairly remarkable. Let's start with the regular season. In the 45 regular season games that Draymond Green was on the floor with the Warriors, it was the best defense analytically in 18 years. He also had in the playoffs a 7.49 net rating. Net rating is they combine your offense and your defense. That net rating is higher than Steph's and Clay's. Mm -hmm. But his value to the Warriors is indisputable. Every nightclub needs a bouncer. There's a whole other side to Draymond's value that we haven't broken down yet, as year in, year out, despite playing the power forward spot, he's always number one on the Warriors in assists per game. 
Whether it's slick bounce passes to find backdoor cutters in the half court, fluid handoffs to Stephen Curry, or the extra floor general that Green gives the Warriors with his underrated handle, the Michigan State product's offensive value is just criminally underrated. Additionally, the man's basketball IQ is off the charts, as Draymond uses his reputation as a pure passer to get momentum-shifting buckets for himself, as this fake handoff and burst to the hoop gave him a variety of highlight dunks throughout this year's regular season and playoffs. The best part about that move is how he picks and chooses his spots to utilize the fake handoff throughout the game, and thinking about it from a defender's perspective, because Draymond spends the entire game handing it off, that makes the one time he's going to fake said handoff and explode to the bucket basically impossible to predict. Having said that, let's not forget who runs the Warriors dynasty, as 71% of Stephen Curry's shots made in the NBA Finals against the Boston Celtics were unassisted, and he shot 60% on mid-range shots. But we break down Curry and are going to continue to break down Steph all the time, but love him or hate him, you can't forget about the second most important player to this machine, which is the passing, defensive, and screen-setting backbone that Draymond Green is. Lost in the shuffle recently has been the second half of the Splash Brothers in Klay Thompson. This sequence back in the second round defines the dominance of the Warriors' backcourt, as Memphis was on the verge of taking a 1-0 series lead here, up two points with 40 seconds remaining. After the ball swings around to get Desmond Bain scrambling, this pump fake and clutch one dribble pull up to his left from deep gave the Dubs a one-point lead, which was followed by Curry clamping up Morant's drive and stuffing him clean, which sealed the game. Specifically in terms of the now underrated player Klay Thompson, who some are saying isn't even a top 10 shooting guard anymore, many fans aren't taking into account what one year of getting into form is going to do for Thompson in 2023. It isn't talked about enough that at the highest level of 5-on-5 five -five basketball, Klay fluidly bounced back despite missing 941 days, posting 20 points per game on a shooting split of 43-39-90. In 2022's playoffs, Clay made the second most amount of three-pointers. The further removed from his injury and the more reps Clay gets under his belt, the closer he'll get back to that all-NBA player he once was. If you're not buying that Clay's potential improvement is the Warriors' most intimidating feature in 2023, then you can point to the youth movement. Andrew Wiggins just got major praise from Mavs owner Mark Cuban, which I'm going to cover in a separate video. Speaking of separate uploads, Jordan Poole, Jonathan Kaminga, and Moses Moody deserve some coverage at some point as well. One man we haven't talked about is the 19-year-old product of the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, Patrick Baldwin Jr., who was the Warriors' 28th overall pick in 2022's NBA Draft. But entering the NCAA in 2021, PBJ was actually projected to be a top 10 pick, but would suffer multiple ankle injuries, limiting him to merely 11 games during his lone season at Milwaukee. As we've seen with Jordan Poole, Draymond Green, and Kevon Looney, among other draft steals for Bob Myers in the front office, Golden State has a history of morphing late round selections into stars within their roles. Baldwin's size and shooting touch that he showed off at the college level gives him the same player build of a less athletic version of Jason Tatum. Standing at 6'9 with a 7'1 wingspan, plus the fact that he was a 5-star recruit out of high school, makes the sky the limit for Pat. It's head-scratching and frankly BS that so many GMs passed on this man because of unfortunate injury setbacks, considering Baldwin Jr.'s skill set perfectly fits in the modern-day style of basketball. Whether it's the coast-to-coast -coast takes and passes in transition, the stutter steps plus in-between game, or the fundamentally sound shooting chops from deep range, Patrick relies on his perimeter skill to get the job done. His big man-esque frame combined with his guard-like abilities in terms of his handle and footwork allow him to stop on a dime with a defender draped all over him and shoot directly over the top of them. To be fair, his efficiency fell off during his freshman year at Milwaukee, as PBJ shot just 34% from the field and 26% from deep. At the draft combine, PBJ's 26-inch vertical wasn't anything to write home about, but considering he's gotten to this point without much athleticism, flashing legitimate shot-creating potential and poise off the bounce at the D1 college level, again, I'm not sure why he wasn't a bigger prospect in this year's draft. 
Just think about how tough PBJ's shot is to guard for the majority of NBA players with his freaky 9 foot 2 and a half inch release point on pull-up J's. On any shot for that matter, but the length just makes it that much tougher to guard off the dribble. Maybe Pat doesn't have major bunnies, but from the limited tape on him, you can tell he's nifty for his size being able to relocate with and without the ball like a player in the backcourt. The Warriors have a ton of forwards in their rotation for the time being, so he may not get a ton of minutes in his first season, but who knows how contract situations are going to play out with Wiggins, who's a 2023 unrestricted free agent. Regardless, PBJ adds depth on the wing, and it'll be interesting to watch his annual progression. Who's the Warriors' biggest rival next season? Is it my Raptors, who they play during Rivals Week? Is it the Grizzlies or Mavericks, who they played in the second and third round? Or is it another team like the Celtics or Suns, given Curry's rivalries with Tatum and CP3? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. Two shoutouts from my last video and this one in my next video, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.